Okay, this is the start of stoichiometry chapter, chapter 11. In this little video, we're going to introduce what stoichiometry is and I'll talk about mole ratios and how to write a mole ratio between two substances in a chemical reaction. And the main idea about this stoichiometry or stoichiometric problems is that you have to start out with a balanced chemical equation in every problem. The stoichiometry is the study of the quantitative relationships between the amounts of reactants used and the amounts of products formed in a chemical reaction. The quantitative refers to the amount of something, some numerical amount. And we're going to talk today. We're going to talk about moles and moles, but later lessons we're going to talk about grams to moles or grams to grams. And you know, we start out with so many grams, we end up with so many grams, things like that. Stoichiometry is based on the law of conservation of mass. The mass of the reactants always equals the mass of the products, right? It doesn't go away, it, it just changes form. That's the basis of a chemical reaction. And when we talk about these mole ratios, we're using another conversion factor. And this conversion factor relates to the amount of moles between any two substances in a chemical reaction. And in this example, we have two moles of aluminum oxide decomposes to form four moles of aluminum and three moles of oxygen. So this is the balanced chemical reaction here. And the two, the four, and the three are the mole ratios or the molar amounts of each, each reactant or product involved in this reaction. And we can just create these mole ratios between these any of these two products, right? Or reactants, any of the two things in this reaction, we can create a ratio. So the ratio of aluminum oxide to aluminum is 2 to 4. Aluminum oxide to oxygen is 3 to 2. 4 to 3 for aluminum to oxygen. Or we can flip these over, right? We can flip them over and put oxygen on top, aluminum on the bottom, be 3 to 4, or 3 to 2, or 4 to 2. We can flip them over. There's six different ways we could do these three different chemicals here. Okay, so but how are we going to use those? I'll show you here on the next slide. Okay, so we're, we're using these. We're using this mole ratio. We're given some something in a problem. We're given an amount of moles. In these problems, they were, were all given some, some, some amount of moles. We want to figure out how many moles of some other product or reactant in a reaction that we need or is formed to make this happen or to from the chemical reaction we're given so many moles we want to figure out how many moles of something else would have to be used or formed from that chemical reaction so we're going to create a mole ratio and the mole ratio is always the same we always put the moles that we're given on the bottom just from the chemical equation how many moles is in the chemical of whatever we're given it's from the chemical equation the moles of the unknown the thing we're trying to figure out goes on top so this is just creates a little fraction here, just like these fractions we had over here, the 2 to 4 to 3 to 2. Whatever we need, we do that. Okay, so first example, we have a simple problem. How many moles of oxygen do you need to create, mol to create 8 moles of water? So the first thing we have to do is start with a balanced equation for the reaction. Okay, so we have 2 moles of hydrogen gas plus oxygen, 1 mole of oxygen creates two moles of water. Okay, so we need to determine the correct mole ratio to use to when we have moles of water to moles of oxygen, right? So we're trying to figure that out. So you start off always, I encourage you guys to always use this little, um, this form to do the conversion factors and draw a line, put the con two, draw a horizontal line and put two vertical lines in the middle here. And on the left side, wherever you're starting with, the moles of whatever you're starting with, eight moles of water in this case, what we need to find out, the end, the start end goes over here. And in the middle goes our molar ratio. Okay, so you always want to put wherever we started with, that goes on the bottom. So with this 2H2O, we put that on the bottom. Two moles H2O goes on the bottom. But we want to end up with oxygen O2, since there's no number in front of it, we know that means one mole of oxygen. Okay, so then we use unit cancellation to determine the moles at the end. Okay, so it's not too hard. So to do that, okay, so we use cancellation. The water moles cancel out. Eight divided by two 
gives me four moles of oxygen. Now we just use really easy numbers here, right? And we it doesn't really we're just using it for an example. And you guys could have probably done this with in your head without any of this conversion. But if I just said, you know, something that wasn't a nice number like 5.8 moles of H2O, how many moles of oxygen do we have? This is a good way to set this up so you don't make um, any mistakes that, that um, in doing this conversion. This is the this mole to mole in the middle here from the reaction is the heart of our stoichiometry reactions. Okay. Okay, so we have this problem here is a little different, not much different, but um, well, I should this is actually H2 the way we want to set it up, right? How many moles of hydrogen do you need to create eight moles of water? Okay, so we have the same balanced equation. We're starting with the same thing, but we're trying to figure out the moles of hydrogen do we need. Okay, so to do that, we need to set up our molar ratio again. We have two moles of water and we have two moles of hydrogen, right? So we use unit cancellation again, and you can easily see that this is just, this cancels out. And I know this is, you know, if it's the same number here, it's going to be the same number over here. So eight. Over here, we end up with eight moles on this side. Okay, so if it's one, if it's the same number of moles in the react in the chemical reaction, if we get this, we know whatever moles we start out with, that's the number of moles we're going to end up with. Okay, one more example here: carbon dioxide exhaled by astronauts can be removed uh, by a reaction with lithium hydroxide. According to this chemical equation, so how many moles of lithium hydroxide are required to react with 20 moles of carbon dioxide? That's about the average exhaled by a person each day. Okay, so we need to get rid of 20 moles of, of CO2. How many moles of lithium hydroxide are we going to do? So again, we used easy numbers, but we're going to go through this process again of setting it up here. So what do we need to start out with? What do we have? The balanced equation, so that was already given. We're, and then we're, we're given 20 moles of CO2. What do we want to find? The lithium hydroxide. Okay, so to set that up, draw our little T chart here. Draw the, the horizontal line and two up and downs. Over here, we put what we were given, 20 moles of CO2. On the right side, we put what are we trying to figure out? Moles of lithium hydroxide. Okay, so we got to set up our molar ratio in the middle. Molar ratio just comes from our balanced chemical reaction here. So we're going to put go up here, CO2. CO2 goes on the bottom. How many moles of CO2 do we have? Well, we just have one. There's no number in front of it, so we have one. How many moles of the lithium hydroxide do we have? Well, there's a two in front of that, so we're going to put a two up there like that. Okay, so we're going to cancel things out, right? So... CO2 cancels out. So how many moles do we have? We end up with 20 times 2. Or we need 40 moles of the lithium hydroxide to completely to react with, the, to get rid of the 20 moles of the carbon dioxide. So that was just an introduction to stoichiometry, just the mole-to-mole -mole ratio. This is the simplest stoichiometry would do. Later on, we'll get into problems where we're given grams, and say if we're given grams of carbon dioxide, we have to change that to moles, and then do this. And then if we want to figure out how many grams of lithium hydroxide we need, we have to change the moles of lithium hydroxide to that. So the conversion factors, we do the moles to grams, the grams to moles. That's why I emphasize it so much. That's going to be happening in these stoichiometry equations. But the heart of it, the new stuff, is this mole-to-mole -mole ratio from the balanced chemical equations. So answer the questions on the form below and I'll see you guys in class tomorrow.